and welcome to HUD's Connecting Communities with HUD Resources webinar. My name is Erlene Seely. I am a Senior Management Analyst and Regional Faith-Based Liaison in the New York Regional Office, Office of Field Policy and Management. HUD's mission is to create strong, sustainable, inclusive communities and quality affordable homes for all. We are hosting this webinar today to offer the public, faith-based and nonprofit organizations, the opportunity to learn about HUD grant programs administered by the Office of Community Planning and Development. The Office of Field Policy and Management provides management and oversight to all of HUD's regional and field offices nationwide. HUD's Office of Field Policy and Management is your first contact for services and information. The regional and field offices communicate the priorities and policies of the HUD secretary and develop community relationships that ensure the success of the secretary's initiatives and special projects. Now I'd like to turn the meeting over to Angelique Ubina, executive assistant in the Office of Field Policy and Management to provide some housekeeping items. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Erlene. Participants' lines will be muted during the presentation. All HUD employees should disconnect from VPN to view the webinar in Microsoft Teams. There will be a Q&A after the speaker's presentation. If you have a question for the speaker, please feel free to send it to the chat section, which is located on the top left-hand side of your screen, or you can use the raise hand icon that is located in the meeting toolbar at the bottom of your screen. This web webinar will be recorded for training purposes. Thank you, Erlene, and I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Angelique. Today, we are pleased to welcome our guest speaker, Celia Jones, Program Manager from the Office of Community Planning and Development. Let's go ahead and get started. Celia, I'm going to turn it over to you. Awesome, thanks so much, Erlene, and hi, everyone. Um, my name is Celia Jones, as Erlene said, and I am a program manager in the New York Regional Office of Community Planning and Development. And um, I'm really excited for everyone to be here and to listen to my um, hopefully not too long a spiel about community planning and development, or CPD. And so, um, you know, our first question and our, the first question for a lot of people is what is community planning and development? What is CPD? Well, um, I, I don't like to read slides often, but I'm going to um, read this next slide closely um, just so everyone uh, can get a good sense. So the Office of Community and planning and development seeks to develop viable communities by providing decent housing, a suitable living environment, expand economic opportunities for low and moderate income persons, and the primary means toward this end is a development of partnerships among all levels of government and the private sector, including for-profit and non-profit organizations. And this is kind of where I wanna start with everything because this is the crux of the matter. What we want to do is provide decent housing, suitable living environment, opportunities, supportive services. And we wanna do this uh, by creating partnerships, uh, not only among uh, within HUD, within other organizations, which includes public housing, multifamily, uh, fair housing, uh, the Office of Housing Counseling, uh, but also amongst other federal agencies. Uh, and then of course, amongst people in our private sectors and then our nonprofit sectors, organizations, and all of the people doing the work every day. So um, 
What we want to start talking about is what are the grants that CPD uh, oversees? What are the grants that CPD looks at and provides? So we have two types of programs. One is called, um, we have competitive and formula grants. So formula grants, and we'll talk about specifically what these formula grants are. Um, uh, there are grants, Community Development Block Grant or CDBG, HOME, which is Home Investment Partnerships. It's actually one of the only, it's our only program uh, that is not an acronym. Uh, we don't know why. I've never been, I've been doing this for a long time. We have no idea why this is not an acronym, but it's the HOME program and it's um, the full name is Home Investment Partnerships and it's not an acronym. Another formula grant is the Emergency Solutions Grant um, or ESG. It was previously the Emergency Shelter Grant. We updated it I, um, a couple, I don't know, a couple years ago to more encompass the work that ESG does. Um, there's uh, the HOPWA program, which is Housing Opportunities for Persons with HIV and AIDS. Um, and then there's the Housing Trust Fund or HTF, which is a formula grant to the states. Now, when we award formula grants to people, those formula grants go directly to states, counties, cities, and other types of municipalities. So those formula grants that I just mentioned, and we'll be go into a little more detail, um, you'll find out about those the people, the organizations that are overseeing them are governmental organizations. Com competitive grants, on the other hand, um, are various are various grants that come um, that are awarded via a notice of funding uh, uh, opportunity process and are usually awarded to nonprofit agencies, although sometimes local governments also receive those. And that program in particular, the biggest competitive program that isn't something um, that's a special, that's a special program or uh, a program that comes along, for example, uh, when it comes to if there are any disasters or if we have like pandemic related um, pandemic related programs. But the main competitive program that CPD oversees is the continuum of care program. And that program is our what we provide to uh, agencies, nonprofits uh, for um, providing um, unhoused persons with housing, rental assistance, supportive services, um, and various other administrative funds to house house persons and keep them housed. Okay, so as I said, when we talk about formula grants and we talk about competitive grants, we fund them in different ways. So. For CPD formula grants, as I mentioned, funds are given directly to those local jurisdictions. They may carry out the activities themselves. So some of these jurisdictions carry out down payment assistance programs themselves, or they may enter into written agreements with subrecipients or contractors to undertake the activities that they want to do. So for example, under CDBG, we have what's called public service programs. And most times CDBG uh, grantees, local jurisdictions will contract with a nonprofit organization, um, even a for-profit organization to provide uh, persons with uh, supportive services or to provide funding to things like food banks or anything like that. And the competitive grants like uh, the COC grants that I mentioned are awarded uh, through a competitive NOFO process and dispersed directly to nonprofit homeless providers to carry out those activities. So when we talk about that, so now we're gonna get into a little bit of the meat and potatoes of each of these programs. Um, and as I said, um, we're gonna start, we're gonna start with our formula grants. The Home Investment Partnership Program or HOME are awarded to states and other local municipalities, cities, counties, towns, villages sometimes. Um, uh, they're awarded annually as formula grants, and there is a formula that is uh, done to determine how much money each local jurisdiction gets. 
And these funds, home funds are specifically related to creating affordable units, sustaining affordable units, and helping people uh, who meet the criteria stay in those properties. So these activities include building, buying, and or rehabilitating affordable housing for rent or home ownership. Uh, you can also provide direct rental assistance to low-income persons. Uh, we call that program the Tenant-Based Rental Assistance Program. Uh, we also see home funds used to provide down payment assistance to uh, people making um, a certain amount of making a certain amount of money. Um, it's 80% or below of area median income, and that is different based on the family size and based on the um, and based on the uh, family size and area location. And so those are just a few of the things that you can do with home, but the biggest piece I want to remind everyone with home is that it's specifically uh, to create a new affordable unit, to maintain an affordable unit, or to provide rental assistance for someone to obtain that unit, or down payment assistance for someone to purchase an affordable unit. So. The Housing Trust Fund is uh, a grant that HTF is a large funding source that goes directly to states. And it is a, akin to the home program um, in that it is an affordable housing production program that complements existing federal, state, and local efforts to once again increase and preserve the supply of these decent, safe, and sanitary affordable housing for extremely low and very low income households, including homeless families. So as I said, with home, HTF funds and like the HTF funds go directly to states uh, as a, just a reminder, they can be used for the production or preservation of affordable housing through acquisition, new construction, reconstruction, um, and or rehab of non-luxury housing with suitable amenities. And so we also want to make sure that when we're talking about the type of housing we're building, um, that these amenities are things that would be in every and everyone's home obviously we say non-luxury but you know we are coming in to realize that there are a lot of things especially as uh, our climate changes that are now no longer considered luxuries and the programs have evolved with that in mind community development block grant community development block grant i'm sure you've probably heard of um, but it is probably our most our most being CPD's most visible program. It is also the program that allows us to do a, the widest range of activities. And basically community development block grant is used and it's a formula grant. So it goes to cities, states um, and other local municipalities to build stronger and more resilient communities to support community development activities, um, and and that is, if it sounds pretty macro and all encompassing, it really truly is, um, because CDBG can be used for infrastructure, economic development, public facilities, uh, community centers, uh, housing rehabilitation, uh, public services, demolition, code enforcement, micro enterprise assistant, home ownership assistance. Um, they're really, they're really, there's a, a couple, it's almost easier to say what you specifically cannot do with CDBG because there is so much that you can do with CDBG. And that's also probably why um, everyone, you may have heard of it. And it is truly one of the most effective ways for local communities to provide all of these types of things to um, not only people, um, not only low and moderate income persons, but also low and moderate income areas. And I think that that's a really important thing because another thing that CDBG looks at is how to build communities, is how to revive communities. And that 
doesn't just involve building something. It doesn't just involve um, putting in a new sidewalk. It might involve, you know, building a park and a bike lane and then providing certain programs within the community center that connects all of those together. In addition to the neighborhood surrounding it, providing um, a homeowner repair. So really think of CDBG as, is, as a, as a, as a very large program that is used to build the community. It is, it is one of our community builder programs. Um, and it is, uh, I, uh, it is beloved by all, I would say. Um, it, I, I think it is one of the programs that we have that people are very vocal about whenever uh, anything gets cut. So we, we will always hear about it. So our next grant, specifically um, formula grant, specifically related to um, homelessness is the Emergency Solutions Grant. And this is a formula grant that is specifically um, meant to address unhoused persons in emergency or transitional shelters to either assist them regain permanent housing after experience housing crisis or homelessness or to help prevent them from becoming homeless if they are at risk of becoming homeless. And it also provides numerous um, supportive services to uh, assist in those. So for example, um, we the ESG program um, is used for engaging and outreach for um, homeless individuals and families living on the street. Um, it improves the number and quality of emergency shelters uh, for homeless individuals and families. We also provide funding through ESG to help operate these shelters um, and provide services to these shelters. Um, we ESG provides rapid rehousing, which is um, a form of rental assistance that allows someone to be who is uh, immediately homeless to rapidly, uh, hopefully as quickly as they can, find a new unit to put them in and provide them with rental assistance um, and also prevent families and individuals from becoming homeless. And that's a, obviously, as we know, this is a big one, um, especially coming after the pandemic when we are seeing our eviction moratoriums go away and we are seeing that people, while they might be back on track, they might be back in their jobs, they have very large uh, arrearages that were not, uh, you know, that they cannot, they can now pay their rent, but the, ba the, the arrearages um, are still there. And so these are all things that ESG focuses on, and it's specifically focused on providing um, persons with outreach and assistance to prevent them from becoming homeless, to move them into permanent housing so they are no longer homeless, and to provide them with the services to uh, maintain that permanent housing, which is really important. Uh, the next and final uh, Home program that I will speak about is our HOPWA program. And the HOPWA program is uh, um, housing opportunities for persons with HIV and AIDS, obviously, or HOPWA. Um, and it is actually the only federal, I don't, you know, once again, reading the slide because I think this is really important. And I think, once again, as a personal cheerleader for CPD, it is the only federal program dedicated to addressing the housing needs of low income people living with HIV and AIDS and their families. So what happens is that grantees partner with nonprofit agencies, so the cities, the local governments, um, the states, um, to support persons with HIV and AIDS. This is a program that covers a large array of housing and supportive services for people living with HIV and AIDS. So um, there, 
there is a Hopwell competitive program. Um, it's it's smaller. So just so you know, there are some nonprofits that do receive direct funding um, from HUD through a competitive process. Um, but the majority of Hopwell funding is used um, is a formula method, meaning that it goes to the local jurisdictions. Okay, so we've talked about the formula grants overseen and uh, provided, if you will, by the by CPD. One of the the largest competitive program that CPD runs, and the most um, uh, maybe the most visible is the Continuum of Care program, which is a competitive program that provides funding um, for nonprofit providers, state and local governments to quickly rehouse homeless individuals. So there's the rapid rehousing again. And if you'll, you'll notice, we do have crossover with the formula grants and the competitive grants, but they all are specifically focused on, um, they do have a specific focus. And so we want to quickly rehouse homeless individuals and families while minimizing the trauma and dislocation, um, promote access to mainstream programs by homeless in individuals and families, and optimize self-sufficiencies, uh, self-sufficiency among individuals and families experiencing homelessness. So we, the continuum of care program is overseen um, those funds every year. We have a competitive uh, NOFO, a notice of funding opportunity process that is spearheaded by the leads of the continuum of care. And the continuum of cares um, uh, are by uh, locality. So we have one for New York, there's NY600, for example, which is the New York City continuum of care. And these grants are um, for permanent supportive housing, which is just what it sounds like. It's permanent supportive housing. These, this permanent supportive housing is for individuals who have the highest need, who have instances of chronic homelessness, and who have the hardest time maintaining and sustaining that housing. And that is what permanent supportive housing is for. It's to permanently support individuals who would otherwise be unable to maintain that housing on their own. And we do that through one, providing them with housing, and two, providing them with ongoing services for the permanent ongoing supportive services. And as I said, um, this is kind of the gold standard, I would say, of providing um, homeless homeless housing, because permanent means permanent. Um, the only time someone um, is, no one is required to leave, um, and they are provided with these services because they will need them for the entirety of their tenancy. And so that's a really important, we do this through rental assistance, we do this through supportive services dollars, we do this through operating funding, um, and this goes to nonprofits, um, and like I said, some local jurisdictions who run the COC programs if they're smaller. We also provide a program, as I mentioned, ESG does as well, called Rapid Rehousing in the Continuum of Care program, and Rapid Rehousing is for is a one is I would say a step lower from a care level from permanent supportive housing. Um, there is not a requirement to be, uh, there is a requirement in permanent supportive housing under the COC program to uh, be disabled. For rapid rehousing, there is not a requirement for disability and there isn't a requirement um, to have an, a long-standing history of, of homelessness, and that might mean that you are not chronically homeless. And rapid rehousing is just what it sounds like. It's finding someone who is, is, is literally homeless, a property, and it also provides them with, once again, supportive services to maintain that housing. And I just want to really uh, 
reiterate the importance of supportive services and all of the programs that um, the Continuum of Care funds, uh, and that those supportive services are um, are not only recommended, uh, but they're required that the agencies receiving these funds provide supportive services to the persons um, that are living uh, in these programs that have received this rental assistance. Um, we also have some transitional housing. Um, we also have um, um, we have some new programs that have come up um, called the Youth Demonstration Housing Program, which is specifically addressed for younger persons um, aging out of foster care and other things to um, unhoused persons. So, you know, the COC program is 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 the biggest competitive program that CPD oversees, and it really is to provide uh, persons with the well-rounded, with not only housing, not only a voucher, but it's there to provide them with all of the services that they will hopefully need to maintain that housing. So that's, um, you know, that's the, that's kind of the overview and of the programs. I know that that it was a, probably a lot for everyone to take in. And I know your next question is going to be, well, tell you, how do I get this money? So um, we're gonna go over that and I'm gonna show you just a little bit um, about who to talk to, how to find out who to talk to um, in your jurisdiction um, and where we're gonna start. We're gonna start um, at the HUD exchange and, and what is the HUD Exchange? So the HUD Exchange is our online platform um, that provides you program information, guidance, services, tools, um, not only to the general public, but our partners, um, our state and local governments, nonprofits, some continuum of continuums of care, COC, public housing authority, tribes. Um, and all of the partners of these organizations, it's really our, it, it's our one-stop shop. It's actually not necessarily um, the HUD website. It's more of a technical assistance website. And I really like looking at that way, it that way because it's really great for that. Um, it has a lot of resources. It has a lot of trainings. It has our program support. Uh, it has grantee data and profiles, which I'm going to show you how to look at. Um, it has news and it has email updates. Um, you can also sign up for the HUD Exchange mailing lists. Um, and uh, there, there will be various um, sections where you can where you can do all of that in this website. And so I'm gonna do a little tour through the HUD exchange, but before I do that, I'm gonna just, we have some resource links for you, for everyone um, that uh, basically go through uh, all of the programs that I talked about, the, the home program, housing trust fund, CDBG, ESG, HOPWA and COC. And just so you know, we do have, we do have the links for the HUD exchange, but, but what I'm going to do, um, I'm gonna actually show you even how I get to these links in, in a quick second. But what I also wanna show you some of our contacts. Um, so the general questions about HUD and the programs, we also have, um, field office states. So HUD.gov for states, for general uh, questions or inquiries for the New York Regional Office. Um, we have the web manager email. Now, um, I know um, I have heard that there are people that are not from the New York area on this call. Um, and, and what I believe Earlene would tell me to tell you <laughs> is that if you are curious about who you need to or how to contact that person, someone in your region, um, we can probably get you to that. Um, or as I said, you can look at the um, hud.gov backslash states. Um, what I was talking about, all um, these these mailing lists, um, as you can see, www.hud.gov backslash subscribe backslash mailing list. That's going to take you to all of our mailing lists. And I'm going to 
I'll just show you. Let me, um, I'm gonna share my screen for everyone because that's where we are about to go. Um, and I want to, everybody just let me know if you can see my screen. Um, and so the first thing I wanna show you is sometimes how I get to the HUD exchange. And sometimes it's as simple as Googling, just typing it into the top of my search button here. Um, and so, as you can see, I see welcome to the HUD exchange. We have kind of the, it looks like probably the most clicked on items here, but welcome to the HUD exchange. And, and truly, I just Googled HUD exchange. I didn't type in anything and I clicked on HUD exchange. So this is just a general sense. This is what the website looks like when you get there. And um, I think the question everyone kind of has on their minds is, well, how do I know if a community that I am working with how do I know if the area, the city, the county, how do I know? How do I know if they have funding? What kind of funding do they have? How much funding do they have? Who do I talk to? Well, um, this is, I use this tool as well. I use this for myself. I use it when people ask me questions. Um, and if you can see up here, you can go through your programs. We have resources, we have trainings, we have program support. So these are, this is all, it's kind of a one-stop shop. And then we have my favorite little section and I'm not being hyperbolic about this, um, grantees. And um, it is really just HUD exchange dot info backslash grantees backslash. This little page packs a very big informational punch. So you say to me, let's say, um, I'm gonna start with New York, but that's just because. You wanna start, we're gonna look for a grantee page by state. So you can pick any you state see, you'd like. Um, Celia, do you have the, are you sharing? I was, I thought I was. You, you Did it were stop? Right now. Yeah, it stopped. Did it, it stopped? Oh, there that's fine. Uh, yeah, yay for, um, yay for technology. I could have sworn I was. Does anyone know when I, when it stopped, when I went to this grantee page? This is what happens when I just talk. Um, so, you just doing that. Yeah. so, You're good. so, this takes us to a lot of different places and it gives us a lot of information. The first thing you can, we can either search, we can search by name, by state or by program. So let's say that you are thinking that you might have a program that you would love to talk to a local jurisdiction about. You wanna run a food bank and CDBG, that's an eligible activity. So we're gonna search CDBG. So the first thing this does is obviously by alphabetical order, it's gonna pop up all of our CDBG. It's gonna pop up all of the jurisdictions that get CDBG in alphabetical order um, by state. Now, you can, you can drill down into all of this. You can say, okay, well, I live in New York because that's where I live right now. I'll show you how we can get to other places too. Don't worry, I will not forget about you non-New uh, Yorkers. And um, okay, look, so this just popped up. So we say I have New York as our search tool. We have community development block grant as our search tool. And now we have every, every city in New York, every jurisdiction in New York that has CDBG. Um, it'll also, as you can see, I hope, yes, it looks like I have my red line. As you can see, it'll tell you what other programs these uh, jurisdictions have. Some just have CDBG, some have CDBG in home, some have all of them. Um, uh, and some have some programs you may have never heard about, um, but 
those aren't really important, but just so you know, um, you might see something you're not used to. So um, because this is a grant, um, the town of Brookhaven is an agency that um, a local jurisdiction that I have worked with, I'm just gonna do, just gonna click on this one. So as you can see, when you click on Brookhaven Township, uh, we have the year 2022, and you can say like, oh, wow, the town of Brookhaven in 2022, that's where I want to do my program. I want to do work, see if I can, you know, get a food bank. Okay, well, that says they get $2.1 million. We'll go with $2.2 million in CDBG. That sounds great. They got 2.2 in 20. 20 uh, in 2021. So it'll go through and if we click on view more awards, it'll list all of the awards they've gotten in the past um, in the past years. Brookhaven's a little different. They just became a um, their own formula grantee in 2018. So this is a, sh a little bit shorter of a list. So the other thing I want to show you. So now if we click on Brookhaven town, uh, and we go into overview for CDBG. Um, uh, I'm going to pick a different one because I forgot that theirs isn't updated for CDBG. Uh, actually, none of their contacts are. All right, I'm going to pick another one. Oh, Hopways. Okay, good. So let's say you're like, well, I wonder who I talk to. In addition to being able to see how much HOPWA money they get, you can say, oh, look, there's the point of contact for me to call or and or email um, as it relates to uh, who to talk to. Um, I can tell you that this person is also the CDBG contact, so the website hasn't quite updated. Or if you What's great about this is you can click on contact field office and it'll take you to the staff, the staff and the region. So we're region, as we can say, New York. We're region to New York, New York. And this will actually show you the contact of our director, who is Abigail Ford. That's Abby. Um, and you can contact you can contact Abby. So awesome. there's two ways. So now I showed you, I'm gonna pick a different state for everybody. I think I saw someone something pop up that someone was in Georgia. So let me show you. We can do, um, let's see, Georgia. So we can search by state and we can search all grantees and we can see, obviously we're gonna, I'm gonna get us out of um, COC right now, but we can see all of the jurisdictions in Georgia that receive CDBG home, um, maybe COC um, and all of the other various, um, oh look, there's Brookhaven, Georgia. So we're gonna click on that. Um, and you can see their recent awards. So this one, they might not have their contact in there, but we can see um, their recent awards. And then when we look at click contact the field office, which is the Atlanta regional office, we can scroll down and see the director of the Atlanta regional office for CPD. So, you know, I think that, that these are, ways for you to look. I obviously can't say that someone is, you know, the town of Brookhaven, Georgia is going to fund you, um, but we can show you um, how to look up if they get the kind of funding you'd like, um, how much they get, um, their website, and maybe their contact information. You can also just search by contact information. So let's do a COC. Let's do a COC. Let's pick our state. Obviously, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna start as I said with New York City. Um, just because. Um, and this is going to not only pull up the COCs. This is also going to pull up specific COC 
recipients. Now, this isn't the most updated list, um, but it will tell you their awards. It will tell you their point of contact, and it will give you the regional office you could contact if you have more questions. Um, for example, let's say you have decided that you want to start a um, rental assistance program for uh, persons and you're thinking, you know, how do I get started? Who do I talk to um, in New York City about applying for continuum of care funds? So as you can see, you can drill down not only into continuum of care program. There's two little sections you can drill down. So continuum of care program will give you both the COCs and the areas um, and then local jurisdictions. Um, but you can also, it will give you the local jurisdictions and specific nonprofits. What you can also look at is the nonprofit, is the continuum of care in the county slash counties that you are located within. And you can say the, the first people you want to contact about getting in, in getting uh, maybe just starting to have conversations about what you would need to do to apply for a COC is right here. Um, and these, the point of contact for the COCs, which any of these COCs are going to start with NY, um, or depending on what state, and I promise we'll go to another state. Um, so I'm going to go into NY 600, which is the New York City, with this, which is the New York City COC. We're going to click on this. And we're going to see that we have not I, I only, don't know what they talk about, though, huh? Hey, everybody, could know, you please mute your lines? <laughs> Thank you. OK, so if you want to talk about who you might want to talk to about becoming a COC grantee, you're going to want to talk to the collaborative applicant. Um, this is the point of contact for any um, homeless person and you could click on this and or call um it, so this has not only the lead of the coc that you might want to talk to it also shows all of the awards that were given in 2021 we haven't updated with 2022 yet so not only can you see who the head of the COC is, you can see all of the agencies that get a COC grantee see, and see how much it is. Um, and it will also have your point of contact, which is a POC for homeless persons, about I'm living in New York City. I have someone who came to me and they, they, they need some place to go. They need a shelter. They need some place to live. This will be their, your point of contact and you can search it. Uh, you can either search it through here or I can go up and show you um, need housing assistance. Um, need the housing assistance um, is kind of the second part of this um, and one of the other links that we have. And this is going to take you to the same kind of search. Are you homeless or at risk of homelessness? you find or if you have um, a client or someone you know or someone that just walked into your agency or your church uh, you, that you could click on find homeless assistance and as you can see it's going to take us to the points of contact in numerous states so the next state i'm going to i'm going to do um and um is uh we're going to do michigan because that is originally where i am from uh, and so I probably recognize some of these agencies. So, um, so as we can see, we can look at either the points of contact for the COCs, and we can say, I who is the point of contact for homeless persons in um, Oakland County, Michigan? Um, and we can see, so we either, um, we can click on this and say, hey, where do I go? I have someone who is looking for assistance, who is looking for shelter. 
and and it's right here. So, you know, these are just the ways, like I said, you might, this is not going to immediately provide you with um, assistance for a person you're working with or assistance for yourself or um, a CDBG grant for your agency. But what this is going to do, it's going to start the conversation about uh, what or who you might talk to, what is available in your area, and how you might go about contacting someone to get more information about the work that they do or the eligibility of something that you would like to do. You know, it might just be as simple as contacting the, um, the lead of the COC um, and saying, you know, I'm thinking about, I have a small shelter. Does the COC fund that? And they might say, well, actually that is done under ESG um, and you could go look and, and, and see that way. So it's just to start the conversation um, and it's to be able to look at the programs, the formula and competitive programs that CPD has um, and how to connect your agency, yourself, your clients, um, your tenants with services that they may be eligible for or for programs that you may want funding for. And we can all, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a large, as I said, this is a very um, large overview of everything. And so what we want to make sure, and I'm going to stop sharing unless someone needs anything, but what we want to all make sure is that, um, is that we have a basis for all of this. And as I had mentioned, this is a lot of information to throw at everybody, but it's mostly to show you that you have a lot of options. You have a lot of people that you can contact. You have a lot of options and programs to look at to help uh, to um, help your clients, to help yourself, to look at what your agency may be able to do to create those kinds of programs. And to say, yes, you could do that, or no, you couldn't do that. So. Um, I hope that this gave uh, some clarification of through the mud. And um, I think we, Erlene, are going to open it up to questions. Yes, thank you, Celia, for sharing your expertise and for your presentation. I know it was informative for me and I hope um, everyone was able to learn something about the programs administered by the Office of Community Planning and Development. Thank you, Celia. I will now turn the meeting over to Angelique to begin the Q&A. Hi, so multiple are asking if slides or recording can be sent out to the customers. Yes. Uh, Everyone will receive a copy of the slide presentation. Uh, we record the webinar for training purposes. Um, at this time, we are working to see if we can share um, our HUD webinars with external users. But um, at this time, uh, we can only share the slide presentation uh, with attendees. Uh, yes, I had a question. I, I really I wanted to know was, will we be able to get copies of um, all that information as to how we can get the grants and things like that? So that was my question too. Hello? Yes. So so your is your question specifically how to get grants or i mean i think um the so just to be the there's two different ways as it relates to like a formula grant um or a competitive grant um if you are looking to receive um funding for a program you want to do for a competitive grant um, you would for the COC program, you would um, 
you would first touch base with the lead of the continuum of care. So that little section where we went through um, and looked at the continuum of care, for example, New York City NY 600. Um, and that is the start of applying for that grant. Um, then you, um, for any kind of formula grant, if you have an idea of what to do or what you might want to do, that's where you start having conversations with the contacts that are in um, that are for CDBG, and um, those are usually your state and local government. So essentially, um, this doesn't sound very helpful coming from someone who uh, is uh, works at HUD, but it actually you'll never, um, to get these funds, you'll never talk directly to someone at HUD. Um, we're, uh, you will talk to someone, um, a local jurisdiction that you are, where you are located or um, the state that you are located in. And you'll say, hey, um, I was wondering about how I apply for CDBG funds in the town of Brookhaven, right? And that's where you would hopefully be able to use the information in the HUD exchange to find that. Okay, for, thank to you. To find that, that initial the, contact, that, yeah. Yeah, it answers my question because I was really basically listening to the most part about the homeless grants because I'm definitely thinking about trying to uh, get some programs and services for um, the homeless people. Uh, I am on the Housing Authority Board in Dania Beach, and this is what uh, we have been speaking about. So that's why I want to know, you know, about how to go about to talk to someone directly through her to uh, see how we can, go, you know, start this process. Right. So the, and that's a really great question. And I, I'm glad you brought it up, Polly, because I think it's a really important to point out that that is that's kind of exactly why I showed you that grantees and contacts for the HUD exchange. So um, you'll be able to where did you say you're from, Polly? From Dania Beach. I am a member to the Dania Beach Housing Authority Board. Can you tell me what I, I just can't. Can you tell me what state that is? That is in Florida, from Broward okay. County. Broward County, thank you. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Maybe yes, this will yes. help too. Okay, so Broward County. Let me remember how the alphabet works. All right. So we're going to go into, we're going to start with about grantees, and we're going to search by state. To start, we're going to start by, you could also, we're going to start by state. Hopefully this will help for anyone who has individual questions about, you know, what to look for in their state, right? Florida. We're going to go, we're going to, so if you click on all grantees, it'll pop up a bunch of things, but what you can do if I could spell right. So we can see the Broward County Housing Authority. We have Broward County, Florida. We have Broward House, which might be a COC. And then we have the Broward County Continuum of Care, FL601. So Polly, I'm gonna click on this for you. I'm gonna click on it, hopefully it works. And then we're gonna hit search. And here's where it comes up, where it shows you the Broward County COC. And this shows you um, all of the COC grants that they got. But most importantly, what it shows you is, who do you talk to in Broward County about how to start a pro the process of maybe getting a continuum of care uh, competitive grant. Um, and I did see a question that asked if this was if the COC is only for um, is 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 only for homelessness. Yes, the continuum of care program is specifically for um, homeless persons, rental assistant housing homeless persons in various ways. Um, mostly from a permanent perspective, from transitional to a permanent perspective with supportive services. So Polly, if you were looking at this, you could say, okay, so I can contact Bertha Henry and I can just say, hey, I was thinking, 
what would I have to do? Should I come to a COC monthly meeting? What should I do? And then you could also look at all of the agencies that have awards in, in the county. Um, and this will show you the name of the agency, um, the COC that it's in, and um, what kind of uh, a housing it is, permanent housing, 18 unit. This is really nice. It's pretty specific, right? So just keep that in mind that that's, I, I, that's why I wanted to show you this because it's not, obviously we know, you know, it, it, it seems very daunting. And what this, what this uh, website does um, in, in a really helpful way um, and I'm going to stop sharing. And so um, is, is, is it can show you just where to start? It's not going to say, yeah, you're going to get funding. But now you know, oh, I, I don't just have to send an email to any random person at HUD and CPD and have no one respond to me, right? So that's just a quick little walkthrough. And if anyone has, you know, um, if you have any specific questions, hopefully that answered if you have any specific questions about how to do that for your area. Yes, it did. You gave me a lot of insight and some information <laughs> because, Great. you know, some of the ladies on the board, we was talking about that because we, um, do have a concern about the homeless that's in Daniel Beach because we see where some of them, where they sleep at in some of the senior buildings and the stairwells. And we just had a concern, you know, as to why uh, the city didn't try to tackle this issue when we have some of the homeless that's sleeping near the city hall. So um, this is one thing that we was talking about. And we also going to work along with the housing authority and see, you know, uh, what they can do as well when it comes down to issuing vouchers and try to get the permanent homes for people. And this is what we were talking about. I, I agree, you know, and uh, disagree when it comes down to people just once a year or sometimes feeding the homeless and then you just send them back out and they have no place to sleep. They need a well, permanent place. Yep. And that's exactly why um, I uh, like to shout from the rooftops the importance of permanent supportive housing and housing that involves uh, not only um, giving someone a voucher, because I think um, I think public housing is really important, but I think sometimes it can miss the mark with some of our the most vulnerable in our communities, um, especially when we're talking about homeless persons, right? Because it's not just as easy as saying, here, here's a voucher, go find a place, because that's hard. What the Continuum of Care program does and what the permanent what permanent supportive housing does, it not only provides a person with rental assistance, but it also provides them with the services they need to find these, these places, to move into these places, the funding for security, to, just, so, just so you know, so these programs are very all encompassing. Um, and I think that public housing and vouchers uh, provide a very important, um, need in the community i there there are other needs that are addressed using some of the funding from cpd from a more all-encompassing aspect that allow those persons as you said to not become homeless a year later and that's what we're looking at so hopefully once you start to look through these contacts that's what the continuum of care program is about and that's what we're working um, at, at, at HUD and in CPD and to provide the guidance to keep those programs running and running the way they're supposed to yes that's exactly what what our goal is is to, to find have permanent residents that also have the services where they uh, will be able to get rehabilitated back into society and to yep. tackle with whatever mental issue there is that will cause them to, uh, you know, stay out and be homeless, you know, so I really do appreciate you letting me know about the program because awesome. this is a, this no is problem. a start. This is a start yeah, for that's me. What and, I, that's, what I, that's what I really hope that all of this is, 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 a, is just a start because I think the biggest challenge is knowing where to go or what to see or or who to even talk to. And when you say like, oh, this is a HUD program, you're like, well, do I talk to HUD? Do I talk to, do, but knowing actually you can start yeah. at a smaller level. And I think that that's really um, what I hope after this, everyone can see is that you can, um, it's obviously not gonna get you there 
may be very fast. Um, it might be a process because these are federal yes. funds and they have requirements, but it'll help you start the process um, and figure out who to talk to. Because that, uh, you know, even for me, um, that's half the battle is who do I talk to? Yes. Thank you so much. Angelique, this is the next question. Sure. So next question is from Jordan. I apologize if I've missed this, but do you have to be a nonprofit entity in order to apply for these funds to be of assistance to people in hardship? It depends, uh, which is I know everyone's least favorite answer to a question. Um, uh, you do have to be a nonprofit, an eligible nonprofit agency to be a COC recipient um, or a local government. Um, so, or a housing authority, uh, quasi public, you, um, private entities are not eligible for, um, for COC funding. Uh, that being said, so, um, it depends, um, for some of the formula grants, it depends on what your local jurisdiction requires and that there are some requirements for CDBG or, um, there are some requirements for CDBG or, um, uh, or the home program that you have to be a nonprofit um, to provide some services, but you don't have to be a nonprofit to provide other services. So um, it, I think it really just depends. Um, and you can be in the process of getting your nonprofit uh, status. Um, but for COC, yes, um, you either have to be a, a nonprofit or a uh, local or quasi-governmental agency. Okay, great. Um, do all have access to the HUD exchange? Yes, everyone, you can literally, like I said, uh, Google it just like I do. I even Google things um, that are part of my daily workload. So yes, everyone has access to the HUD exchange. You have access to every part of it. You have access to the training. You have access to the resources. So the answer is a resounding yes. And it's a great website to have access to. Okay, great. Is there a program to help with with here's property, tax sales, reclaim, clear title, probate, court lawyers to reclaim from the developer purchase fraud and domain government takeover. <laughs> yes. <Hello>? Um, <laughs> um, so uh, the, so yes, that is a, um, I can't speak to every, every aspect of that but but basically uh there are a lot of things within cdbg that will help people pay for uh back taxes arrearages um title searches i'm i'm not um it really just depends once again um just so you know, um, when you're asking a local jurisdiction that receives formula funds, they all do things slightly differently. So just because something is eligible under HOME or CDBG or HOPWA, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that that agency, um, that that local jurisdiction does that. Um, excuse me, I'm the one that raised the question and I'm so glad uh -huh. I didn't know we were gonna get to speak to our questions. I put in the chat my relationship. I'm very familiar with HUD from the 1960s when I was in college in New York. Model cities, the whole nine yards. Yeah. The CDBG here is a once a year program um, through our, uh, we have what you call CDC, Community Development Corporation. Um, what monies we've gotten to do this work so far has been with nonprofits. I guess my concern being on this webinar is it sounds more like formula based grants than competitive grants. It, did I miss something? The only competitive, the COC that I heard you talk about was for the homeless. Are there more grants where we would be in a competitive mode? We go directly. We don't have to go through all those state and local. And I'm retired first black female city manager in the nation, Oberlin, Ohio, 
40 years ago, 1979, I know all about trying to get money out of the government from the other side giving and other side receiving. Now I'm head of a second nonprofit organization over 20 year period. And this is serious business that all of us nonprofits are mostly paying out of our own pockets, either to match or to go beyond the scope of the particular grant. So is there another competitive grant to apply for? I know about all those other ones and we don't do homeless, we don't do AIDS and so forth. We do heirs property. Our black land loss is too critical for me so, to do anything else, okay? Thank you. You know, as it relates to, are there other competitive programs? The, the issue and unfortunately is that there are, um, but there, it is when there is a need for it, and it's usually a special need program. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think Erlene yesterday just sent me, and it might not be through CPD. Sometimes, um, sometimes these competitive programs, where there is a need for these competitive programs, or when people um, have these conversations, they actually um, are done out of headquarters from the secretary level. So, right. So, you know, we have public housing, we have this, and then there are quote unquote special projects, right? So Erlene sent me something yesterday um, that was specifically out of HUD, but was for historically black colleges and universities, and it was a competitive program. So, you know, the answer to your question is I, unfortunately, um, the majority of what we are dealing with, yes, it's it's formula grants where you would have to talk to the local jurisdictions, um, which I know, um, and um, I, I, I feel your pain on jurisdictions with CDBG and home and ESG doing all of the same stuff every year. Um, and then, you know, the COC can be uh, very cutthroat as well. So I, I, um, I absolutely, uh, understand and feel that pain but i would i would say that keep an eye out and also that they might not come through cpd or they might go through headquarters and then move to cpd but we do have other competitive programs uh the problem is is they're they're not as recurring or constant as our formula and competitive grants, unfortunately. You should also know that you can visit grants.gov uh, to look for notice of funding availabilities for any of our uh, grant programs that may post notice of funding availabilities uh, when funding is available. Are you looking for any particular funding for a, a program or service that you're offering in your community? I guess maybe she um, dropped, dropped off. Angelica, any other? Questions? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I oh, there she goes. Oh, here you go. I'm sorry. Thank go ahead, you so much. We we have applied and been funded by Federal Home Loan Bank of Atlanta, the new foundation just for Black and Indigenous people decolonizing. But I'm interested as a former government employee, BA in government, and master's degree. I she answered my question. You don't okay. have Thank a formula you. program for heirs property, and there are other ways we can get it. And Miss Earlene, I'm so glad to see you in person because <laughs> I I do go to straight to the HUD. We have a contact with your secretary, Mark Fudge, there's her name. So I can do that. I just wanted on this webinar to see what I could hear, hear about that was new and directly to all of those and many other offshoots. Uh, of heirs property. So I'm grateful. I'm good. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. It's been a great webinar for me. Thank you. And I may have to beg off. How much longer does it go? <laughs> I thought it was just an hour. Um, yeah, one more question and then we'll try to wrap it up. Um, if, it, if an award, thank you. If an award is granted. Hi. Oh. Hello. Hi. Hello. 
Hey, please, Miss Sherry, can you drop your contact, please? Um, it's in the chat. Did you get chat? that? Yeah, oh. my phone number, our email address. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, I'll look for you. Felicitas. Yes. Sounds Spanish. Where are you from? Cuba? No. I'm Haiti? from Cameroon. Cameroon in Africa. Cameroon, Africa. Okay, I've been 19 yeah. countries in Africa. Do contact me. Yes, for sure. Go ahead, Angelique. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, for, yeah, we own a uh, nonprofit organization okay. called For Newark, and we're very, very interested in shelters, providing supportive uh, housing for our community here in Newark, New Jersey. Because we have crisis here, and we are ready to like help the residents of our community. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Do you have a question? No, no, no question. Okay. Yeah. Contact. Okay. So okay. we have one more. If an award is granted, is a new application required quarterly or yearly? Um, if that's about if that's a continuum of care question, um, so no. If 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 so every so the continuum of care every year if you receive a new application so you apply every year there's a notice of funding availability every year for the continuum of care so you'll get a new grant um and then the subsequent years you will be required to um uh it's not really reapplying but to work with the continuum of care they'll check how you're doing they'll check they'll check your spending um and obviously with the caveat that we know first year grants can take a little while so you essentially reapply every year and that is called the renewal process um and so once you have your new grant and then technically we've had grants that have been renewed for 20 years 22 years um 15 years um so they just they'll either renew uh or um you know if it's not working out for you um you don't have to renew it but it is a it is a the the NOFO process for the continuum of care is yearly, and all of the previously awarded grantees are also part of that. Um, but it is um, up to the continue to you, the agency who has received that grant, to work with the continuum of care um, to get that renewal application in. So it is a yearly process, but it's only new the first year. Angelica, any additional questions? Um, uh, no, not at the moment. Okay, I as I mentioned before, I will send everyone a copy of the presentation. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us this afternoon. I really appreciate you being here. Um, I hope you found this information and dialogue valuable. And thanks again for joining us today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Have Thank a good you. day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.